Greetings, my name is Cheryl Wissa and I'm the National Diabetes Initiative Chair of the Student National Pharmaceutical Association, also known as SNAPA. And I'd like to welcome you to part two of the Life is Sweet, Savor It, patient-centered mini lecture series. This mini lecture will cover staying active. A few words about SNAPA. SNAPA is an educational service organization of pharmacy students whose purpose is to plan, organize, coordinate, and execute programs geared towards the improvement of the health, educational, and social environment of the community. We're dedicated to the pharmacy profession and serving the underserved. Now a few words about our guest speaker. Dr. Regi Dr. Regine Belliard is a clinical pharmacy specialist in ambulatory care at Johns Hopkins Community Physicians in Greater Dundalk, Maryland. And she's also an assistant professor of clinical and administrative sciences at the, no at the Notre Dame of Maryland University School of Pharmacy in Baltimore, Maryland. She is board certified in amb ambulatory care pharmacy and her area of expertise includes diabetes management. She is pleased to serve as a resource for you today. Without further ado, Dr. Regine Belliard. Thank you so much. I look forward to speaking with you all about um, the flavors of staying active. Physical activity or exercise is anything that gets you moving. Walking, gardening, briskly pushing a baby stroller, climbing the stairs, playing soccer, or dancing the night away are all good examples of being physically active. Physical activity simply means movement of the body that uses energy and helps to lower your blood sugar. What's the big deal with physical activity? Physical activity has been known to offer a lot of benefits. It lowers cholesterol and blood pressure. It helps to improve your blood sugar control. It can decrease how much diabetes medications you're using. It can help improve flexibility and strength, burn calories to help with weight loss. It can help relieve stress. It makes your heart and muscles and bones strong and helps to decrease the symptoms of depression. Before you start exercising, you should understand the risks that can come with exercise. Talk to your primary care provider to see if you can safely exercise without risk. The most common health problems that have been linked with exercise are sore muscles and injury. If you get help and slowly add exercise to your daily routine, you can avoid these risks and enjoy your exercise routine. To put your best foot forward, you should dress the part. Before you exercise, put on comfortable clothes. Try to avoid loose-fitting clothes as they can sometimes get stuck on machinery. Shoes should have cushion and fit very well, and you should use diabetic socks to make sure that your feet are protected. There are different levels of activity when you do exercise. The talk test is a simple way to measure how hard you're working during exercise. The most common activity levels are light activity, moderate activity, and vigorous activity. You can see these highlighted in blue, green, and yellow. During light activity, it is easy to breathe and carry on a conversation. During moderate activity, you start to breathe more heavily. You can still carry on a conversation, but you need more effort to do so. Finally, during vigorous activity, it becomes difficult to carry on a conversation and it requires a lot of work. Some examples of light activity include casual walking, bicycling less than five miles per hour, stretching, weightlifting training, fishing, light yard work or housework, and playing catch. Here are some examples of moderate activity. You walk briskly at about three and a half miles per hour or bicycle at five to 10 miles per hour. Maybe do some general gardening like raking or trimming shrubs. If you dance or golf while walking and carrying the clubs or do any water aerobics, canoeing or tennis with doubles, those are all examples of moderate level activity. Some examples of vigorous Activity levels include running or jogging five miles per hour or greater, walking very fast, 
at four and a half miles per hour, bicycling more than 10 miles per hour, heavy yard work, such as chopping wood, swimming, like freestyle laps, aerobics, basketball, or singles with tennis. To spring into shape, there are important steps to take before and after exercising. It is important to stretch for five to 10 minutes to help you warm up before you exercise and to cool down after you've finished exercising. Stretching helps to keep your joints flexible, prevent stiffness, and reduces your risk of injury. You can try doing slow stretches or moving stretches. You can try yoga, Pilates, or even Tai Chi. When you stretch, you should try to relax and stretch just enough to feel a little tension in your muscles. You should not be in pain when you stretch. There are two types of, ex of exercise that lead to great fitness. The first type of exercise is aerobic exercise. Aerobic exercise helps your body use insulin better. It makes your heart and bones strong, relieves stress, improves blood flow, and reduces your risk for heart disease by lowering your blood sugar. You should aim for a goal of 30 minutes of aerobic exercise five times a week at a moderate to vigorous level. The second type of exercise is strength training. Strength training makes your body more sensitive to insulin and can lower blood sugar. It helps you build strong muscles and helps keep your bones strong. You should aim for a goal of strength training two times a week. It's okay if you don't make it to these goals right away. The important part is that you start moving. Do what is comfortable for you and slowly work towards these goals. Aerobic exercise increases your heartbeat. Aerobic exercise includes things like jogging or stair climbing, moderate to heavy gardening, dancing, walking, and swimming. Strength training includes weight machines or free weights, resistance bands, lifting light weights like cans or water bottles, and push-ups, sit-ups, squats, and lunges. The best way to spring into shape is to find an activity that you enjoy. If you do something fun or if you do something different, every time you exercise, you won't ever get bored. Find the time to exercise. If you can't exercise for 30 minutes, break it up in 10-minute blocks. Next is to tell a friend or family member so that they can keep you motivated. Look for help if you need it, and start with small goals and commit to them. You'll eventually get to your goals. You can spring into shape at work by doing a couple of different things. You take the stairs more often, you can exercise more. Try to get up once an hour from a chair and take a quick walk when you're at work. Stretch every couple of hours for a couple of minutes. It's a good way to get moving. If you take public transportation, an easy tip to exercise is to get off at a stop earlier and walk the rest of the way to work. You can also do chair exercises right at your desk every couple of hours for just a couple of minutes. A good way to spring into shape at home is to do your own yard work. You can also play catch with children or pets, walk in place maybe during commercials, or carry things into the home in two trips instead of one. Finally, try walking around the house while you're on the phone to get you moving. Whenever you're away from home, there are small things you can do to spring into shape. Try parking the car far away from the store entrance or walk down every aisle of the grocery store. If you're waiting at the airport for a flight, walk while you wait. And finally, stop every few hours during a road trip to walk around and stretch your legs. Exercising is great, but you should also know when it's a good idea to rest. Avoid exercise if you feel sick. If your blood sugar is too high, if your blood sugar is too low, 
or if you have no feeling in your feet. If you exercise during these times, it can be dangerous. You should also avoid lifting heavy weights if you have eye problems or high blood pressure because weights can affect this. You want to make sure that every time you exercise, you are safe. Check your blood sugar before and after you exercise. Exercise can make your blood sugar go down if you take certain medications. So it's a good idea to make sure that it's not too low before you start or finish your exercise. It's a good idea to bring a snack in case you have a low blood sugar while you exercise. You should drink plenty of water while you exercise. If you have a friend with you when you exercise, make sure to let your friend know that you have diabetes and how to help you if you need it. Finally, one of the best ways to stay safe is to start slow and only increase as you get comfortable. In summary, exercise is a great way to stay healthy. You should talk to your primary care provider before you start to make sure that you're healthy enough to exercise. Start with small goals and slowly work your way up. You should include aerobic training five times a week and strength training two times a week. Most importantly, have fun when you exercise. If you need more information about great ways to start including exercise in your everyday activities, please visit these websites for diabetic friendly options. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Belliard, for taking the time to discuss ways in which patients can stay active and reduce their risk for possible heart issues due to diabetes. I want to give a very special thank you to Walmart and Sam's Club and SNAFA by whom this web lecture was sponsored. And thank you to all the listeners of this web lecture. We do hope that this has been informative and will be helpful in your everyday life and in managing your diabetes. This concludes part two of the series.